We're back here on the Believe in NFL Draft Prospects podcast with another scouting report episode. Today, we have two of the top corners in the 2023 NFL Draft. We're talking about Joey Porter Jr. from Penn State. We're talking about Christian Gonzalez from Oregon. Before we get to those guys, I just want to tell you folks about today's sponsor, which is Bet Bet BetOnline remains your number one source for all of your sports betting needs this season. Everything from NFL and bowl season to esports. You'll always find the latest odds, team matchup info, player news, and game trends at BetOnline. BetOnline features live betting, free contests, and live scores for almost any sport or game imaginable. We're the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite leagues and events. Head to BetOnline.ag and join and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Make sure you use promo code BELIEVE to receive your rewards. BetOnline, where the game starts. All right, Ryan. So we already had a little bit of a, a discussion that was brewing before we started taping on these two guys. Now, the one thing to set us up for breaking down both Porter and Gonzalez is that they're already both getting a ton of hype. Mm-hmm. And we're at that beginning period in the cycle where not a lot of people, I think, have really watched all these guys but are going off of the accolades, going off of the size. I, for Porter, was frustrated at times, very frustrated at times, but very excited watching him play because he's he's a massive dude. He's six foot two. He's 194. The arm length is the big thing for me, coupled mm-hmm. with the athleticism, with the change of direction skills. But the arm length, I, I first play, the first thing I wrote down, crazy long arms. And do, do you have a measurement for that, per chance, by the way? We do not have a measurement for that. All we have is a birthday on him. We do not have any of his particulars from the metrics. But it's got to be what? What do you think? Like 33 and a half? Maybe 34? It's possible. It's possible. Uh, He's going to have the longest arms in the class. I I can't imagine a different corner. Do you think a different corner has longer arms than he's going to have? Julius Brents from Kansas State has 33 and 7 eighth inch arms. So... I think there's okay, gonna maybe be, he measures in right right under that, but still. And I, Anthony Johnson for Virginia nuts. has 33 and a half, Joe. There's some long quarters in this class, man. There's a couple long ones. <laughs> well, when we get that measurement from Joey Porter Jr., we'll actually know. But again, I was saying this to you before we started taping. I think mm-hmm. I might be a little higher on him because I'm making this decision purely off of upside. Frustrating okay. as hell to watch because he's not really using that length effectively all the time. But compared to Gonzalez... I think he moves really well, and if he can figure out to how to properly use that length, I think he can be a really freaking good corner. So when you say he moves really well, are you talking long speed? Are you talking change of direction? Like what, what kind of stands out for you about Porter? The change of direction um, – he's not like an elite, elite tier athlete. I'm, mm-hmm. not, I'm not saying that he is, but for a guy that's six foot two mm-hmm. with the length, Yep. His change of direction is really good. His hip fluidity I thought was really, really good. And I think his long speed's underrated. I, I feel like at times the games that I watched, it he wasn't able to truly flash that as much mm-hmm. as I would have hoped. But still, I think his long speed's good for a player of his size. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I relatively agree with you on from the athleticism perspective. I think he's a good all-around athlete, Joey Porter Jr. And I, I love that you started with the – length conversation because I mean that is the first thing that pops out man like he's one of those dudes that literally when he's in his stance his his hands are like below his knees right in Mm -hmm. his cornerback stance like he's got just ridiculous length and I think that everything that you so why does length matter at the cornerback position I think that Joey Porter shows why it does at times right at the line of scrimmage you can be clearly disruptive you can be also disruptive at the catch points you know being able to get that late reach knock balls down disrupt the catch point he does all those things very well, and he has a lot of upside in those regards, and I agree that he can match up athletically with most wide receivers. The reason mm-hmm. that I am a little tentative on him, and I'm not out on him, and we'll talk about the valuation of him as far as where we would peg him in the draft, I am just a little weary of this type of corner because he, for me, is incredibly handsy down the field. I knew you were going to say that. He is, man. And there's so there's a thin line – between physicality and being too handsy as a defensive back. There's a very fine line in that conversation. And for me, 
I think that he's going to struggle early on in his career with some pass interference penalties, some holding penalties. And does that mean that he won't be successful? It's not what that means. What I'm saying, though, is I think that he may need to change his style a little bit as a player. And again, that's not the end all be all like he can do it because he has good athleticism. He has the length to your point. He has all the traits to be a very successful corner at the next level. Just for me, I've seen some guys that struggle with the hand fighting down the field with the grabbiness and they never really recover because that's just how they are ingrained as a football player. So I'm worried that this kid is just going to be a pass interference waiting to happen early on in his career. Could he get past it? I think he can because he has the choice to do so. It's just those types always worry me because there's some guys that just never get past that. Right. Purely off of traits. Mm Mm-hmm. The the category of Joey Porter Jr. off of traits Mm -hmm. and how he brings it to the field are two different prospects. One's a first-round pick. One is uh, an underdeveloped raw athlete that is going somewhere past day two. Like that's that's where the it's which guy are you going to get? And I wrote down super grabby player. That was Mm -hmm. one of the things that I wrote down in my notes because you're absolutely right. And it, it's kind of one of those things where he's so long and he's able to to stick with guys that it's just this innate instinct to just keep grabbing at dudes. Because he has the length, he can do it from a lot of distance, way right. more distance than most guys that he's able to do. And it's just – it's a part of his game. He's, he's really freaking raw, though, yeah. overall. And that's what gives me some excitement for his projection where – He's not very clean. He makes some, a lot of mistakes. He gets caught with those PI calls. He also at times can be a bit emotional. And there was the, I think it was the Michigan game. Mm-hmm. He got called for a penalty for picking up and slamming a guy. And he started, you know, getting all pissed off and screaming because he had this huge hit and they threw a flag on him. Those things aren't great for a corner. But the rawness for how raw he is, and if he can step up and actualize those traits, I think the ceiling is is tremendously high. For a guy like this, I'm also not a fan of the instincts. I think there are at times where he does kind of guess he's in the wrong position in in some of his zone drops. Mm -hmm. Uh, There was one play I recall in particular where they asked him to play over the top and he he read run on one side of the field and there was a pass that was coming up the middle of the field in his direction. Yeah. And he sold so hard to go and make a play on the run. So like those instincts are, are very problematic, but I'm trying not to get caught up on the issues because I think the projection is a lot more promising than the issues that he's dealing with as a player. Well, and and I mean, point blank period to it, you're not drafted Joey Porter Jr. to play zone, right? I mean, it's it's like – Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know I was really high on J.C. Horn, obviously, when he came out a couple of years ago. J.C. Horn was not very good in zone coverage. He wasn't. Like, he was a man-to-man, press man, get-in-your-face corner. And that's what Joey Porter Jr. is. And I feel like if he falls into the right defensive system with proper coaching – that allows him to accentuate those traits early on, I think he'll be fine. It's just, I, I just have a little bit of reservation about that type, right? Because I think I'm mm-hmm. in between, Joey. I think you mentioned it perfectly. From a consistency perspective and from a technical perspective, I think he's probably an early day three football player. I think that's where Joey Porter Jr. is now. First round talents, I also agree with that. I think when you talk about the length, the athleticism, it's a first round level player. I grade him somewhere in between. I'm going to have a late second, early third round grade on him. Oh, wow. Wow. We're really far off. We're really far off? What, you think he's a first round dude? Just like blocked? No, no, no. I don't disagree with that, but I I, I thought you were about to say that you you also had him graded as a first round pick, but this is what I was talking about before we started taping is that I had a feeling we were going to be really far off. But continue. I cut you off. No, no, no. You're fine. Because for me, I think when there's two different worlds that we're talking talking about one with the upside one with what the player is now you have to meet somewhere in middle because there's a reality where he hits his full potential sure but there's also a reality where he doesn't right and there that's where this that's where evaluation could be almost a guessing game at times you're betting on the person more than you are the player and the actualized traits on the field and for me I'm going to go somewhere in between so I think that this is a kid that in the second round I would absolutely start having the conversation but on the scale, he's going to be a late second, early third round pick because I agree that the ceiling is high, but I also think the floor is pretty low as well. That's the that's the weird in-between for me. This isn't like a kid where 
if he's thrown into any situation, I think that he's going to come out and he's going to be pristine. Like I think that you have to be in it with a good cornerback coach and a good defensive staff that understands what he does well, lets him do that early on, and then as you get more and more comfortable, you work on the play down the field, not panicking at the catch point, those different things. If you do that, I think he could be a really successful football player, but I just first round is just a little too rich for me right now. I think my grading is mostly motivated from me not having evaluated as many prospects for as many years as you have. I think that's part of it because you made a really good point that you're wary of guys like this. I'm less wary. I'm more excited. I'm more jacked up, which is why I graded him as a top 25 pick. I think he's good enough to be like you're exa- I, I like I, everything you said. I, I don't mm-hmm. disagree with any of that. Right. That this is a, a guy who who does need some time for development. He's probably going to have some penalty issues in his first season, but purely off of the traits alone in a class where there's some uncertainty for some of these later corners as we get further and further down the board. And a guy like Keely Ringo, who's also super raw and makes a ton of mistakes, is somebody who I had graded very highly and I expect to probably be graded very highly once we get to his evaluation. Mm -hmm. But for those traits, for a team that wants an athletic developmental corner i think a top 25 pick is is where i'd be willing to take a joey porter jr because especially because of positional value too is another thing that that i think comes into play here having good corners having talented athletic corners Mm -hmm. is is important to me see you make it you make a interesting point because you mentioned keely ringo right and keely ringo is another similar player to a joey porter in my opinion of that he's a trade-space player that's incredibly long and has all the upside in the world. I would be willing to bet on a Keely Ringo in the first round much more than a Joey Porter Jr. I'm sure you would too. It sounds like Joe, that sounds like to me, just by kind of how you're explaining it, that Keely Ringo is probably going to be your cornerback one in this class. But I think the difference between those two is that Joey Porter has very good traits for the position. Keely Ringo has elite traits for the position, right? Like there's just a slight difference there, in my opinion. And Keely's two years younger, too. But I know we're not comparing – it's not an apples-to-apples conversation. My point of that is saying that if I thought that Joey Porter Jr. had elite traits, I'd be willing to bet on him in the first round. I think they're very good traits, and he could be a very good player, maybe even a Pro Bowl caliber football player if everything hits correctly. I just don't know if I see elite traits with him. So that's just kind of where I'm hesitant to say first round pick. But I mean, Joe, I guess this is is this cornerback two for you, man. That's what it sounds like. No, 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 no. no. Well, I I haven't done my final evaluations on Clark Phillips and and Keeley. So it's – I would hope he's not corner two. I would assume he'd probably be corner three right after those other guys because, I mean, realistically, who else slots ahead of him? And we're about to talk about Christian Gonzalez, and I kind of showed my hand there a little bit, but, like, who else really would even fit ahead of him? I feel like that after those top two guys, it starts to thin out, and that's where there's a a huge debate on who fits into the conversation. Devin Witherspoon, man. Illinois, it's my guy. It's my guy. You have him as, as corner three? I need to I need to uh, do my official eval on him yet. I just have my uh, mostly my summer notes and then a little bit of some updated watching, but I have not officially graded him yet. But we'll see what happens. We will see. 